I'm joined here by Steve Diggle of the legendary Buzzcocks. They've just been on stage and I must say it was a ridiculously energetic and exciting set. And after almost 40 years of performing, the yeah. first question has to be, how do you how do you keep that energy in your set? What, what's the inspiration nowadays? What's your fire? Well, um, it's all in the nature of the songs. They've always been uh, lively, you know. Yeah. Well, a Buzzcocks audience, when they come, they, they know slightly what to expect. And also, personally, I like to get involved with the audience a bit, know what they're doing. Yeah. At the end, you were, you ran mm. along the audience, you clapped yeah. everyone's hand, you gave yeah. people hugs. That yeah. shows how much it, it yeah. shows how much it means to them, but it shows how much mm. it means to you as well. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it, even after 40 years, you, you, you can't get blase about these things, you know what I mean? When you first started out, you obviously wanted to change, well, didn't maybe consciously want to change a lot about the music industry, but you weren't happy with, with the record labels, you weren't happy with maybe how music was and how it was becoming maybe too, I don't know, industrialised or whatever. <coughs> yeah. Is it, if you were to change something about music today, what would you aim to change? Is it the iTunes kind of thing of just picking singles and stuff because then you don't get that story of an album? Well, yeah, with technology, the whole thing's changed, you know, um, for good and bad, really. I mean, the records used to be precious, that was, yeah. and word of mouth was faster than email in the old days, you know. People knew about this stuff without emails and mobile phones. I don't know how, but it was amazing. Yeah. If you download a couple of songs, I think you're missing out on this one. You hear the whole album as a piece. And that's it's almost back the story to the classic right. day. Yeah. Yeah. To take one particular song, mm. you finished it on, some, on it tonight, so Orgasm Addict. Mm. When that first came out, I'd say, it's one of your most famous songs, I'd say. Yeah. Um, when it first came out, it wasn't allowed to be played by the BBC, even. It was, it was banned, mm. I'm told. Yeah. Is that... Do you think that that was, did that annoy you at the time, or, or did you slightly, in a way, want to rap with Peppers when you wrote that song? Was it, there a slight feeling of wanting to, to do something a little bit out there? No, it was just, well, it was a direct song. Um, and probably slightly shocking in terms of the fact it was just called Old Gas of Money. Yeah. Know? Nowadays that wouldn't be seen. It wouldn't be seen much, no. Yeah, yeah. But at that time it was. The pressing plant would impress it because I said it's disgusting stuff. Yeah. Um, but towards it was just a, a direct thing. Um, and that's probably what shocked people at the time. And Christ, they're singing about orga orgasms and stuff. Yeah, yeah. The amount of uh, people that come up and say, when I bought a record, their mum and dad or something said, what's that filthy play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn it off. <laughs> Orgasm, <laughs> <my God. laughs> It's like, no, no, nobody knew what an orgasm was, you know. Yeah. In fact, we probably give a lot of people the sex education over that. That's fine. We do the same. We do the same. Same with my yeah. dad said, yeah. I'm talking about the birds and bees. Yeah. <laughs> but I was coming to that. All right, I got it now. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, but um, we never made it for that. We make them from the heart and the soul yeah. and stuff like that. And relate to people with it. So, so almost 40 years in, what is, what do you think the future holds for Buzz Fox? There's so many more things you can still do, for sure. Yeah. Where would you see it? You're going to presumably come out with a temp studio album at some point and... Well, yeah, I mean, um, but I'd like to do another one, yeah. Yeah. But I'm going to work on my next solo album because I can't wait for these guys on. <laughs> <laughs> I've already done three solo albums. <laughs> Tell us one of your stories from when you were in your 20s. Tell us. There must have been some oh. wild nights. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was many, many wild rock and roll times. Yeah. It? We did tours with the fun, I did a bit of that with Kurt Cobain. Who has that? Who has that? Well, that's a little bit. You know, some of the last two years we cooled down a bit, you know. Yeah. But we've had so many wild times. But if, if you don't, you know, it's part of it because you're on the road. And you've got to have all that, you know. Yeah. But the stamina is stamina to deal with that and to get them on in the right songs and to get on with it, that's the thing. Yeah. And that's where a lot of bands have a crisis and they can't hold it. Mm -hmm. Me and Pete Shelley are invincible, it seems. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I've got the, ten, the strength of 10 indie kids, you know. And on, the note, on that note, I think we should finish the interview and thank, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>